Hello, Geraldine Bray. Welcome here today to the Moms at Work event. And I'm really excited to hear your presentation. So away thank you. you. Thank you so much, Sinead. It's an absolute pleasure to be on with you all here this morning. And thank you for your kind opportunity to do this. So good morning, ladies. And thank you, Nicola and Lizzie, for joining us live. And for anyone watching on replay, good morning to you all as well. And I'm going to start off just by sharing a little bit of my story. So really, I'm a mum of four. I am based here in Enniskillen. And for over 12 years, my background, I was a corner in the children's day nursery. And I really enjoyed what I did. But it was when baby number four, Kiana, come along. She was six weeks old. And I was sitting at my kitchen table. Kiana was in the Moses basket. And I just looked upon her and I thought, is this the way that life is going to be? This kind of busyness, Monday to Friday, that morning, a very, very early morning, Monday morning alarm clock, working right through to Friday. You were really running the weekends and you were back to that Monday morning alarm clock before you knew it. And I thought there must be an easier way for life. There must be an easier way for work. And I really didn't have a clue what I was looking for. But I started searching on Facebook for something, whatever it was going to be. I came across a lifestyle coach that day and behind it was an opportunity, um, a network marketing opportunity and the company was called Forever Living. And I thought, well, why would I go down that road after having my own business for 12 years? I studied hard, had my degree, whatever else I wanted. And I thought maybe a career in HR was the road I was going to take. And I kind of felt the fear and I really, really stood still. I returned to work when Kiana was just six months old Park time was fine. I did have the best of both worlds. I was still able to be mum to everyone and I had that flexibility of working part time. But once the word full time was mentioned, I locked up that company in an instant. The same evening I drove to Belfast and really the rest is history. Here I am now five years later. The first year I really didn't have a clue to be honest what I was doing. I was learning. I was doing do what I had to do and I was also being mum of four and I was still working part-time in the nurseries as well but this opportunity allowed me to kind of have that opportunity to continue part-time so I wasn't putting too much stress upon myself. When I was in the business for about a year I started kind of going to events and I was like oh my goodness do you know what there is an opportunity here and I started to look at it in a bit more serious way and once I did that within the next six months which would have been 18 months in total I replaced my full-time income and I made what was a difficult decision at the time because I had loved what I had did but I just was ready for a change. My kind of that that gut feeling, my intuition was nearly screaming at me that I needed to do something different and within 18 months then I completely made a choice that I would finish in the nurseries and start my new um, path of a work from home mum. Here I am now, I mentioned five years later, it's been an absolutely unbelievable journey but I think the biggest journey for me is all around self-discovery and um, with our company which I'll speak about a little bit later on I've had so much self-development it's unbelievable so I've really got to know a lot about who I am and um, what my purpose is what I want to do what I'm here to serve I've also had the opportunity to be the best mum that I can be, but I say that very lightly because we all want to be the best mum, but being a mum, my children, uh, my eldest boy is actually 20, and to have one boy, Craig, who's 20, and I have three girls, 16, 13, and six, and people's like, oh my goodness, were you looking for punishment, all these big age gaps, but I wouldn't change it for the world, but like any family, being mum, you have different challenges to overcome, but I had that time of work and from home to deal with different challenges that would come and it's been a, it really really has been a great journey so the company that I'm now part of is known as the aloe vera company forever living I'm very passionate around it but it's also given me an opportunity to explore many different areas and last year in 2020 
2019, sorry, and 2020, I also have a passion for mental health. And I'm really, really um, happy, very, very open to speak about any mental health um, illness, depression, anxiety. And I went away and I got my qualifications in um, drugs and alcohol. I went away for a week and I did my suicide prevention training. And all of this was funded by the income that I was bringing in from my network marketing business. So I'm so, so grateful and will be forever grateful for um, the opportunity that I have had with the network marketing business. So I am delighted to be with all the mums at work here this morning and I'm going to share with you all what I call the blue ocean approach. And it's really a journey of a blue ocean and even just take a moment now just to kind of visualise, to feel, to really what does the blue ocean feel like to you so if you are out there now at that blue ocean you know i'm actually going to a blue atlantic ocean this afternoon it's the beauty of my work i'm going to take my daughter for a few hours because she's fascinated with the beach and i will go and ground myself for a while and look out at that atlantic um ocean this afternoon and for me it brings me tranquility it allows me to stop and to really, really reflect on you know, the journey that I'm now going on and the direction that I am taking um, for myself and my family. Whenever I'm doing this presentation, you know, for me, some people can do it all around business, but for me, I feel there's such a huge connection between personal mindset, business and family. And as we go on this viewpoint now towards our ocean this morning, you can really see that connection yourself. Because if you are in a good place in your personal life, if you are having that daily activity towards your mindset, it all interlinks. It helps the family life, it helps business life. So for me, it's all around one, one great connection. That ocean's all connected. All our oceans are connected. And for me, the viewpoint needs to be from all perspectives so that you are at your best and you can give your business your best, you can give your mindset your best, and you can give, most importantly, your family the best as well. Don't get me wrong, we all have them days where it doesn't feel the best because we it's, it's part of being life. You have days whereby you're not even able to think from there, but what we know after that, you will come back up again. Before I take you to the blue ocean, I want to give you a comparison. I'm just moving them photographs to the side. And I want to speak to you about a red ocean mindset. And this concept for me, um, believe it or not, come a concept that I really enjoyed. It's probably only, there was only a few concepts I really enjoyed during my degree, but this was really one of them. It was called the blue ocean concept. And before the blue ocean, do we have a red ocean mindset? A red ocean, it's just a red ocean, but I turned it to like a red ocean mindset. And think of it, a red ocean mindset from a personal perspective, that your red ocean mindset is very, very overcrowded. Maybe you're working very much in isolation. Maybe you have a lot of confusion. Possibly you have your really, really poor belief systems. Or perhaps it's a fixed mindset. You're finding your mindset is very, very fixed and you're feeling stuck. I felt stuck, as I mentioned, when Kiana was six weeks old. I felt really, really stuck. My belief system was very, very poor. I was in isolation. I could have done with um, Nicola at that time because I definitely was, even though I was surrounded by a big, big family, because I was feeling so stuck. I put myself and my little baby in isolation. I was very, very happy, but reflecting back, I wasn't. I was just trying to find a way out and it is you know all around a red ocean let's look at a red ocean from a perspective in business you think that um, you're in a very overcrowded marketplace that you know how can I be seen how can I be heard because there's so much competition and um, you're forever comparing yourself you're comparing yourself personally you're comparing your products you're comparing your business and there's all this kind of comparison going on and you're like nearly kind of trying to survive really innovation starting to lack because of all this kind of um stuck mindset the innovation will definitely lack because you have to take time you have to stop for that creativity to be able to flow and when we're in that fixed mindset we can't allow that creative side that we 
all have you know i grew up believing that i didn't have a creative side it's took me to the age of 40 to realize you know what i do have this creativity in me why did i think that i couldn't so i couldn't no, i wasn't a good drawer so i thought i'm not creative but we are all creative in our own ways and it's really really important to remember that and another area is fear people can be really really held back by fear and it's all around feel the fear and do it anyway. And that's just to give you a little bit of a, I suppose, overview of how a red ocean mindset and ask, maybe ask yourself, you know, what areas in my life, in my personal life, in my mindset, in my family life, in my business, am I kind of possibly stuck in that red ocean? And what I have found on my journey over this last year, this journey of self-discovery, self-development, once you become self-aware, anything is possible. But the hardest part, believe it or not, is becoming self-aware. And once you become self-aware of what areas you have to work on for yourself, you're on to uh, the right road, you're on to the right journey ahead. And I just put this quote in here by um, Gandhi, and it says, your thoughts become your words, your words become your actions, your actions become your habits, your habits become your values, and your values become your destiny. And just think about that for a moment, as I mentioned, in all them different areas, it all interlinks. Life is all one huge connection. And this quote here, it says, if you're searching for that one person that will change your life, look in the mirror. We spend so much time searching for the right course, for the right thing that is going to change our life, whatever that thing is, we don't really know. But what we don't do, we don't take time to look in the mirror and to see the strength that we have inside us. Look at that image for a moment of that little small fish looking at that big shark. We all have what I call uh, a healthy beast inside us. We all have that potential. We all have that talent, but it's all around starting to tap into yourself because I firmly, firmly believe that for anybody that wants to discover it, it's there within you and it's all about extracting that out. So look in the mirror. You are unique. You are enough. And whatever it is in this life that you want to achieve, you can go and do it very much so. So I'm going to bring you now to my blue ocean mindset and the blue ocean mindset is all around creativity, uniqueness, it's an uplifting space. You have clarity and clarity is so, so important because you need focus. Sometimes in business, I have focused on more than one thing. And when you do that, you really are, I suppose, taking your eye off that focus. And um, my mentor had mentioned before to me, it's like, you, whenever you're just focused on the one thing, you're paddling that boat and you have the two paddles going. But then when you start to focus on something else, you're down to one paddle and you're starting to go round in circles. So as well as it's good, we've heard um, Lizzie has a few businesses. It can be done. It can be done you're with good organisation, with good planning. It really, really can be done. But you need to know what you're focusing on. So, for example, if you do have a side hustle and you have a main business, maybe what is bringing you in the most money and that's the thing you're going to focus on for example for four days a week and then that side hustle that's bringing you in that x amount of pounds you'll focus on that possibly the side hustle you really want to grow and develop but once it's ready to grow and develop it will start to then overtake the income that you're getting from your main business and you have more opportunity and flexibility but it's very very important not to give too much focus if it's not bringing you in the income you still have to focus on that area that's paying your bills that's keeping you secure and leave that side hustle, that new idea you have or that idea you're currently working on, leave it to a Friday, leave it to a Saturday, maybe even a Sunday. This is what you have to do if you want to change and make sure that the main focus is on that thing, on your business, sorry, that is bringing you in that income for yourself. Know what direction that you're going in. It's all about knowing that direction and being clear on that direction. Build the confidence within yourself. People think that I sound very, very confident. Believe me, it's still a work in progress. I have done so much self-development. In 2020, I did months of life coaching and I went to places that I never went before. And even now in 2021, I'm still working on that. It's been a tough journey. I was um, speaking to a lady in Canada over the weekend. I had read her book, which I'm going to share with you later. And 
when I read her book, it really, really resonated with me. And she was asking me about my own journey of self-discovery. And she described it as a windy, a windy journey. And that is a beautiful way of putting it. Because it is a once you start to go within, it is a windy journey, but it's one of the best journeys that you'll ever take in your life. It's all around abundance and the blue ocean. We have so much abundance. We're not comparing ourselves. We're starting to see that we are unique. And because you are so unique and we're all unique, nobody can copy you. So competition becomes less irrelevant. We don't really think there because nobody can come on and be you. Nobody can come on and share a video about what you do because you are you. So you are you and you are unique. It's all about being client focused. And I'll speak about that a little bit more in the next slide. We really need to be client focused around our client is all around again that connection i met an amazing guy he's called dr tom barrett i've had the pleasure of speaking at one of his events and i've met him about three or four times he's based in the us but he's one of he's a psychologist but he's one of the top leaders that i've ever met but yet the most humble humble man but he's so focused around the client and teaching all around that client focus we need to think outside the box and that's where our creativity and we have to allow we have to stop sometimes. I went to a very good friend of mine recently for a coffee. She's a counsellor and we have a very, very close relationship. And I said to her, do you know, I just feel that something's calling me or asking me or pulling me. And she was like, Geraldine, just stop. Just spend some time throughout the summer and go and ground yourself. Because sometimes when we're so busy, 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 we don't allow that kind of creativity to flow and we can't think outside the box. And I'm currently working on that at the moment. My next, one of my next projects I'm working on is my TED talk, which I hope to deliver now in August. And I have to go to a quiet space to really think of what do I want to share? What idea have I got worth sharing and how can it help some other people? And also in that blue mindset, you're very, very flexible. So whatever your business model is, you can, it can be so flexible. And in the current climate that we're in and that we're going into, everything needs to be so, so flexible. You don't want to be just stuck in one area and you also want to have flexibility to whatever approach you're using, whatever product that you have, always have that flexibility as part of you as well. So we're now on board and when you're on board your business and you have your clients, so whether you have a product based business, whether you have a service based business, it's all the very, very same. And the first key area is to know why are you doing it? Really, what is that connection to what exactly you're doing? You have to be so connected that whenever you wake up every morning, that you're ready to go, that you really, really want this to work. You want to make it happen. And once you have that, then in turn, that will help that connection that you have with your business. It's really like a strong, strong connection. Think about plugging this, the plug socket or the plug into the plug socket. That's the type of connection you want. Because if you don't plug that plug right into the socket and switch it on, there's no connection. The electricity is not coming through. And that's the deepness of a connection that you need to have with what you're doing on a day to day basis. For me, it's all around listening. And I'll be very honest, it was something that I was very, very poor on five years ago. And I didn't realize until I got my mentor as part of my network marketing business. And I really struggled to listen. I had so much to tell. I really had so much that I wanted to speak about, but I struggled to listen. And I'm so grateful that five years on now, I enjoy listening. And I actually listen with an intent. I don't listen to reply. I listen. And once I've listened, I will then have my mind working with my reply. And it's a beautiful, beautiful place to be. And when I reflect back, oh my goodness, I think it was excitement, youngness, um, that buzz for life. I just found it very, very difficult to listen. Sometimes I still have to remind myself, but I actually now can be the quieter one in a meeting, which is like, oh my goodness, is this the same lady that we knew? And I learn so much more that way. Everybody has a story. Discover what your story is. If you haven't yet took time to discover that, it's so, so you know, vital for yourself. Everybody has a story and that story also makes you unique. So if you haven't done your story yet, don't worry about it being um, perfect, which is something I'm going to speak about shortly. Just do a story, who you are, what you're about, what you want to achieve, what your purpose is, who you're here to serve. Just do that brief story so people can get to know you so much better. 
And let's face it, what is, what is business? What is business all around, whether it's product or service? It's all around that emotional um, connection between yourself and your client or customer. And you have a solution. You have presented a solution to that person. No matter what it is, it's all around an emotional exchange and you have a solution that's going to help that person's pain point. And that really, in a, in a simple nutshell, is what the majority of our businesses, whether it again is a service or a product, what it's all about. But one of the key areas that I've highlighted in the box here below is you have to know who is your ideal client. Who is your ideal client? If you're currently working on, and I'm always working on this, and it's always like a, a work in progress because um, like us all, we're always trying to tick different things off every week. But if you have a community, if you have a Facebook page or a profile or an Instagram, a LinkedIn, whatever platform that you currently operate from, if you're not reaching out to your ideal clients, it's really like putting out things that's not going to really stick at all. So if you think, for example, um, you're going into a department shop and let's think of House of Fraser just comes to mind there for me in Belfast, okay? And we go in the shop together. We're not all going to go to the same departments because we're not interested in that. But we're going to go to that department that really connects with us. And that is exactly the same with your ideal client. You need to be speaking to your ideal client. But first of all, you need to figure out who they are. It's a beautiful exercise to do. But what is really, really interesting when you do your ideal client, nine times out of 10, your ideal client will actually be very, very like yourself. You'll actually find very, very similar traits to the way you operate, who you are, your values will be very, very similar. And guess what? There's so many people in the world like you as well that you can all form this beautiful community and whether it's a product or a service, you can reach out to your ideal client and really start to create a community of um, people coming together. Mindset is everything and this is really, really key in the Blue Ocean and every morning I start now, when I say every morning, it's took me a long time to become consistent. Some days I might just kind of differ and think about it more than actually write it, but I am trying every, each and every day to be so, so consistent and I start my day off with gratitude. I will write down three things that I am grateful for. And I'm currently doing another course at the moment where it's taking it deeper. So I write down the three things that I am grateful for. I also write down why I'm grateful for them. And you should try this if you haven't tried it. If you are saying you're grateful for a person, send them that wee PM to let them know. And I did this only about two or three weeks ago. And oh my goodness, it was absolutely a beautiful, beautiful exercise. And I actually did it. The first people I did it to were to my three children because my little girl's too young to get a PM and my husband. And and the response and the feeling of gratitude that they had back to me and I had back to them, it was a priceless, priceless feeling. So if you haven't done that, and um, that's my tip maybe for you for this week to go and try that and see how it helps you. Make sure each and every day you have a goal. You can call it a goal. You can call it an intention, whichever you like, and have a personal one and a business one. And that is really setting your scene for the day. You know, when you start on your day, start with the area that you really find hard don't start your day with the easy stuff and get that done and you're like right now I'm ready to tackle that big challenge or that big thing that I don't really enjoy doing don't do it like that always start with the kind of the part that you find that little bit more challenging because by achieving that that will give you the energy to really thrive through and really fly through them other areas that you're working on for that day you need to be reading books. There's some absolutely amazing mm. books out there. Um, my Forever Living mentor, Bernie Allen, um, she wrote a book on how to succeed in business and in life. It's a really, really good read. At the weekend there, I just finished a really good read, which I think would be really valuable to yourself, um, Nicola, in the holistic hand, and it's called The Holistic Entrepreneur. And it's by Nadine Robinson, who I've connected with. And it's another really, really good read. So, Always be reading a book. Never feel like you 
um, have to read it all at once, but do try and read a few pages each and every day. If I get a really good read, I can read it in quite a short period of time. This is me speaking. If you're saying to me, oh my goodness, I hate books. I couldn't even read books. It's okay. I went through my business degree. I never read a book through it. I read the paragraphs I had to read and that was it. I always said, I can't read. I hate books. That was my attitude. And now as my mindset has developed, I actually enjoy reading. And when I'm going away this afternoon, I'll be bringing a book with me. And that's part of my self-development as well. Another area that's really good for you to work on is really know what are your limiting beliefs? Do you, what are them belief systems that you are struggling with? And you can actually write down them limiting beliefs. So maybe today, spend time and write down three limiting beliefs that you have. Um, maybe you don't feel that you have enough um, experience or qualifications or confidence in what you're doing. Possibly you think that there's too many people already doing what you're doing. Or perhaps it's just that lack of belief from within. You're really lacking from that belief within. I want you to write out three of them areas. And what you're going to do beside that is you're going to then replace it with an actual, a real belief line. Okay. So for example, um, I am not good enough. I am not capable of really having a successful business. I am so much, sorry, I am so good enough and I am so capable of having a highly, highly successful business and say it to yourself. And you have to keep on doing this every day, each and every day. Let's think for a moment. I have, I'm currently working on my um, food, so I'm trying to eat much healthier. And I'm also currently working on my fitness levels. So I'm starting to go to two to three classes every day. I have to do that consistently. If I want to see the results, if I want to get back into the shape I was before COVID, which I will, and <laughs> But I'm also grateful for how I am now because I'm very, very healthy. So it's very, very important. Even if you are saying, oh God, I wish I was a bit lighter or I wish I was a bit fitter. Always be very, very grateful for how you are now because it's so, so important because we have so much to be grateful for now. However, if I wasn't going to start to really improve my eating habits every day and I wasn't willing to go to that exercise class twice a week, nothing is going to change. OK, I need to eat each and every day as healthy as possible. Maybe allow myself a couple of treats over the weekend and back to my routine on a Monday. If I want to get fitter, I need to be engaged and I've started with at least two classes, but my goal is to get to at least four classes every week. I'm doing step aerobics, which I really, really enjoy. So find something you enjoy is another tip and I'm doing bungee as well it's exactly the same with mindset but mindset needs that feed each and every single day it takes 21 days for that to become a habit and there's a system and Nadine Robinson explains it in her book there's a system in our minds and it's like you need to feed it and feed it and feed it and feed it and if you stop it you're nearly going back again and starting again and starting again and the mind is the most beautiful wonderful place but it needs to be served each and every day for you to be your best in your personal life and your mindset and your family life and in your business life as well so for me, mindset is everything. And if you have the right mindset, anything after that is definitely possible. Have a plan. You really, really need to have a plan. And let's think for a moment, we're out on this beautiful ocean today and we have no plan. We haven't got an idea where we're going. We could land anywhere and we wouldn't know where we are, what we're there to do or what is going on. Each and every day, you need to have some form of a plan for your business and you're ready to go and execute that plan, whatever it may be. So make sure that maybe on a Sunday evening, I find it's a really, really good time to plan what my week ahead is. And at the moment, it's summertime, so I'm planning in lots of family time as well. But I'm still making sure my business happens as well because I need that income coming in for myself and my family each and every month. So have a plan. And when you start to work smarter, you're actually not working harder. You're working much smaller. And that can be done by something as simple as having a good plan, sticking to it and getting to that next level that you want to go I want to share with you very briefly, I'm not going to go into an awful lot of detail, but I want to share with you a blue ocean approach to network marketing. And um, the reason for adding this in um, this morning to the presentation is that sometimes a lot of people um, would refer to the network marketing industry with probably a very red ocean mindset. And when I say a red ocean mindset, you may have heard, oh, there's so many people doing that thing out there. Um, there is 
so many um, people in my area doing it. It's a pyramid scheme. It doesn't work. You'll be out money. The amount of different things that I've heard over the last five years is absolutely is crazy. And I suppose I want to come on here and really um, let you see it in a good light for anyone watching live and watching back on replay. You know, for me on a Blue Ocean Network Marketing, it's made connections in my life that I never, ever had the opportunity to do before. I went to my first convention when I was in the business only a number of weeks. My mentor really did take me under her wing and um, Bernie Allen has a name and I went to many different events and I sat on that chair in a packed arena with hundreds of business owner, owners and I looked upon the stage and I thought, you know what, maybe one day I will be able to go up on that stage and speak. And I call it positive Polly and negative Nelly. I heard it from another um, speaker show at one time and it really resonates with me. And that day, negative Nelly just was in full control. And I said, you know what, Jordan, you'll never make it there. You're not good enough. How could you ever speak on a stage? And that was the type of mindset I had. So for me, um, the network market, I'm speaking about our company, um, Forever Living, the aloe vera company, that's the company I'm part of and the only company I can share with you about, but the self-development that I have got with that company is completely, completely priceless. And that is something that you possibly don't hear about. So the self-development within the company, the access to the training that we get is on another level. Dr. Tom Barrett, um, Richard McCann, um, so many different big names, even Mickey Hart um, from Tarun, and we had, you know, we've had so many different motivational speakers, and that all comes to us as part of our events. There's still vouching, another lady, um, a book I can recommend, Sharon Logue, um, our company in January, because of the whole COVID situation and the mindset, they put on a full month of mindset work completely free of charge for us. And these are the areas that I want to share with you. Not saying that you're going to go and jump and go back to somebody that's offered you network marketing before, but I want you to be more aware of the opportunity within network marketing. Yes, we, um, I have my fantastic product range, which I'm very passionate about for myself and my family. I take the products myself. I'm a huge product of my product. I share my products and I share the business opportunity. And that's exactly what I do the majority of my work and time alongside, as I mentioned, around the mental health and delivering training there as well. So it's just to really give you an insight that you in the network marketing industry, it's made me so many connections. It's really, really shaped who I am and continues to do so. I went from that negative Nelly looking up on that stage thinking you'll never get there to actually presenting on stage on several occasions now and obviously more recently recently online doing presentations online as well. I never dreamt I would be able to do that. And it was from that development month after month, year after year that I had the opportunity. I now am surrounded by the most beautiful, beautiful group of women that I coach and mentor that I work alongside as well. And I have met so many amazing people. And for me, it's all around bringing people in. Does it work for everybody? No. Some people actually believe network marketing, you come in and it just happens. You're going to get successful. But unfortunately, it's like anything in life. It's what you put in is what you get out. But if you're looking for a space to be part of a community, if you're looking for a space to really grow and develop within yourself, it's an area that you don't really have to do the business, but you can tap into all of that and you can use our opportunity as a vehicle, which a lot of people do as well. They use it as a vehicle to get from A to B. So I just want to share with you briefly um, that outlook on network marketing that you may not have heard before. And I think it's really good to hear it from a network marketer themselves and um, that are that has been life changing and that has got absolutely you know unreal um, progress from so moving on now, I just wanted to add this part in because, again, it's something that comes um, with our network marketing. And when you come into network marketing, you are you, the person that brings you in or possibly could be their upline or the uplines upline. You will have a mentor. And this was something that was really life changing for me. 
And being a mentor is about working hand in hand with your mentee. You're sailing that ship together to achieve goals. And as a mentor, how can you make the most of the relationship and have a positive impact? And that's the part of the role now that I am so, so passionate about is mentoring others. I've actually mentored ladies within my organization and now they're absolutely amazing leaders and mentors now themselves. And for me, and I always say this to the ladies that I mentor, they say, oh, you've helped me so much and you thank you very much. I say, do you know what? Guess what? It was already within you. And sometimes in life, we just need that person to really help bring it out. And that will make all the difference. And if you look at this as well, I've used it from a perspective as a mentor, but maybe think about it from your client perspective, from a parent perspective, keep that connection going. And what you want to do is you want to agree in expectations. You want to listen first and advise. Always stay curious, whether it's with your new client and new customer, whoever it's with, always stay curious. You want to guide them. You don't want to decide them. You want to guide them. You want to embrace vulnerability and you also want to be very, very patient. Patient. So whether that's from a perspective that I've shared as a mentor, a perspective of a new customer, a new client, an existing client, it's a really, really good way to approach and to keep building that connection that we're speaking about. There's this common thread coming through this morning and there's nothing more important than that connection um, with your business, with your people, with your community and with your clients. And this quote here I absolutely love. It says, I can't change the direction of the wind, but I can adjust my sails to always reach my just destination. That's by Jimmy Dean. And the reason I'm sharing that is that things don't always go to plan. Life doesn't always go to plan. And we have to be so, so flexible and weather that storm because there will be storms that always come in life. And I think Sinead said there this morning about this beautiful weather that we're having is just just stop and enjoy it for a little while. You know, there, there will be storms and sometimes in business, you may have to take your foot off that gas. And that is okay because you can't expect to go and to burn yourself out. And you're at that position of having an empty glass. I've been there before. I've done it many, many times where I've given out everything that I've had and I've left myself completely dry. You really, really can't pour from an empty glass. And sometimes when we're having that storm, allow it to happen. Make sure you're refueling that glass, that you have that glass half full and that you can um, weather that storm. Whether it's a change in direction in your business, it's okay. You know, sometimes when we're out on the social, we're gonna have to change a little bit of direction to get to our destination. That's okay, that's what life is around. So it's always having that flexible approach, that flexible mindset, that change is actually quite good. And I'm sharing with you now this picture, this is my little girl, Kiana. And you may think, why am I sharing this picture um, with a check? There's a few different messages in this slide that I want to share with you. And the first one is this iceberg model. And if I, I'm going to use this iceberg model. I'm going to start first around the picture, but I also want to share it with you in different perspectives as well. OK, and the iceberg model for me is that you'll see three quarters of the iceberg lies beneath the water and the top quarter lies above the water. And what you're seeing now when you look at that photograph, you're looking at the top part of the iceberg. Because last year, I set a goal. I set a goal that I would achieve every incentive that our company had to offer. I set that goal after my mother-in-law sadly passed away. I set a goal that I was really going to make things happen. And I put down everything. So there was a car plan where they the paid for my car for three years. And um, there was a a trip called Eagle Manager where we would have been going to Arizona in September. And then there was Chairman's Bonus where we were due to go to Australia in April gone by. We've been very well compensated and looked after. We're very, very fortunate. But what I want to share with you more importantly today is that I want to be um, vulnerable here with you all. I want to share with you that below the iceberg, there was many different challenges. You're seeing that photograph, which is at the top of the iceberg. That's only 25% of the iceberg you're seeing. What you didn't see is a 75% underneath that. And that 75% was different areas of my life. I'm a mum of four, as I've mentioned. I have a business. I mentor a large group of amazing ladies. And life was very, very busy. And there was many times, the start of my year last year, 
you kind of actually forget. I'm thinking, when did we actually go into lockdown? When was COVID? It's kind of like it's going on too long now, you're trying to remember. But I'm going to go back to last year and January and February and March, my building really started to take momentum. And by April, my business was at a level that I never, ever dreamt of. It was like, oh my goodness, this is absolutely amazing. And in the summer last year, I got a feeling that I was still working, but I got a feeling of what it was like to build a residual income, that I had plenty of time with my family, yet this money was still coming in. I was like, oh my goodness, dude, how has this happened? And possibly I took my foot off the pedal a little bit in the summertime, and I noticed a dip. And I fought with myself and I thought, you know what, I'm never going to achieve that goal now. It's gone. It's too late. It's too late. And I fought with myself the whole month of September. I couldn't get my mindset right. I tried to do my gratitude. I wasn't consistent. I just felt very, very stuck. And this wasn't going to happen. But then in October, one day in October, something just clicked like that. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to make this happen. Now, I very easily could have decided, no, I'm not going for this because I had so many different things going on in life. I was a busy mom. And um, one of my daughters, who was 15 at the time, was going through different challenges and maybe my focus needed to be going on her. I was doing life coaching with a, an amazing um, guy called Rodney, which had gone on throughout the year. And I could have thought, you know what? No, I just am doing too much. And I had so many reasons below the iceberg, but I committed. I thought, you know what? I'm going to work really hard. And I worked really, really hard behind the scenes. Each and every day I did a task and I worked so hard behind the scenes and alongside my amazing team. And um, that was the result then in December of last year where we got our checks in April. And I'm sharing that with you, not to um, impress upon you by any means, but just to let you know that you can still achieve when life is bringing you challenges. You can still be get, become focused, but don't always take life as you see it. Don't always take it as on social media. I am currently, I mentioned, completing my TED talk at the moment, and it's all around my journey of vulnerability, all around my journey of being in imperfect because what I realized last year is that I was having traits of perfectionism and it was really really holding me back and you'll see here on the iceberg you'll see people are seeing that perfect world but what they're not seeing is that imperfections that you have and what I wish to help other people with now is to really bring them imperfections above the sea level and let's share them because we all have them and it's that them imperfections that really make us unique to really who we are. This is actually a model that I use when I'm delivering, for example, training around drugs and alcohol. Because what somebody may see is they may not see that 17 or 18 year old that's fell down into a bad habit of so maybe drinking too much or possibly with the era that we're currently in it's drugs that are more popular than alcohol at the moment with our youth. And what they're not seeing is that they're seeing that young kid, that young person, oh my goodness, God bless them, they've gone down the road of drinking too much or they've gone down the road of drugs. What they're not seeing is that 75% under the water where the person maybe is lacking in confidence, they maybe had trauma in childhood, they maybe have no support, they've maybe had a girlfriend or a boyfriend um, break up, they may be being bullied in school. No matter what it is, there's always a reason for what we're seeing above and sometimes we don't really take time to honor that. So whether you have maybe a family member or a friend and on that top of the iceberg, they're being very off, they're just not themselves. And you're like, you know what, I just can't be bothered with that because we have to be very mindful who we spend our time with. Just sometimes in life, take a moment to figure out what's going on on the iceberg below. Because do you know what? The reality is, is that I'm going to very briefly speak about that passion is that your mental health is so real at the moment. Anxiety, um, people going into themselves, loneliness, isolation, um, people who are turning to alcohol, who are turning to drugs. It's real at the minute, guys. And we really have to start to understand is what is going on below that iceberg. It's completely off subject, Sinead, but I just wanted to share that visualization um, there as well. Then maybe it will help somebody um, that is listening this morning or watching back on replay. So think about your iceberg this morning. Think about you know, what is going on underneath the iceberg for you. And yes, you want to think about how you're being seen by other people as well, but be vulnerable. Allow them imperfections to come through and just start being that unique you that you are, because that's 
the, if you think about the people that love you, they love you for who you are. And that's the same type of connection that you want to have for your clients. You want them to really do you love you, adore you, or do you want to be part of your business for exactly who you are? So I want to finish off with this quote. And it says, life has a way of testing our anchors and tempting us to drift. Nevertheless, if our anchors are correctly placed in the rock of our Redeemer, they will hold no matter the force of the wind, the strength of the tide or the height of the waves. And my advice for you all this morning, my message for you all this morning is, do you know what, guys? Never, ever give up. And I hope that has been of benefit. It's been an absolute um, pleasure to spend the time with you here this morning, ladies. And I hope there's something, even something small that you can take away from that. I will go on having a very fulfilled day. <laughs>